What I've called this topic is designing from disruption uh, and thinking through, and it's the same idea, it's the same thing that we, we saw on the agenda. I just felt like this was a better uh, way to capture what we need to be thinking about now is how do we take this moment of major disruption that we've all been through and, and from that design something uh, better uh, and something really, uh, really amazing. By the way, before diving into that, I'm, I'm sort of making the assumption that that everybody knows knows who ISTE is, but I should probably just take like 30 seconds and uh, and do a quick explanation if you haven't worked with ISTE before. Uh, we are a, a large nonprofit organization. We work with uh, every state uh, in the country, many uh, districts, uh, and in about 50 countries around the world. Our goal is to accelerate innovation in learning using technology as a tool uh, to do that. And there's a variety of services that we uh, that we provide. Uh, we provide a bunch of really fantastic uh, online learning um, in areas related to using technology, creating inclusive online environments, uh, doing blended learning well, um, uh, designing for accessibility. There's a whole bunch uh, and they're all available. You can get continuing education credit and actually graduate level uh, college credit for any of those courses. Um, we also have a, uh, a really cool um, program called ISTE certification. It's the only certification that is tool neutral. Uh, and so, so educators or uh, ed tech coaches um, that want to really uh, uh, get a solid foundation on how to use technology effectively um, can do that through ISTE certification. And I think, I don't know, maybe I'm... I'm um, I hope I'm allowed to break the news. If the, if the Los Angeles Unified folks start freaking out, then I'll, I'll just, we'll delete this from the, the track. But I think we've just gotten uh, approval for uh, LA Unified to actually be the first district as a district to offer the certification. So uh, so that can happen right in the in the district, which is super exciting. We're going to be piloting that with, uh, with, with them. Um, and then uh, last thing that I'll, I'll just share in case you're not aware, I'm just really excited about it. We are uh, getting ready to go back live. Uh, we have a big event called ISTE Live, but it's been virtual for the last two years. And we are uh, going to be live in person. There'll be a hybrid option too, but we will be in person uh, in New Orleans this year. So I hope uh, I hope you can come, uh, come and join us. One final thing that I'll share on this, I'd actually ask for a little bit of your feedback on, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll switch uh, topics a bit here. Um, one of the things that we've heard from um, superintendents that we've been talking to, uh, and we just finished actually working with um, uh, SCOE to create uh, a distance online learning guidance for the state of California, and that will be rolling out. Uh, Linda Darling Hammond will help roll that out, I think, in about a week or two. Uh, but as we were going through this process, and we were talking to a lot of superintendents, some of you here, um, one of the things that we heard was frustration about how hard it was to make the right choice about the types of tools and apps to use. And it seems easy enough, right? Just, just pick. But then we think, well, what about privacy? And what about accessibility and affordability? Is it age appropriate? Is there good quality? All these sort of factors. And so we, uh, we've we tried something uh, in, in response to that feedback. We've been working on it for about uh, almost a year now. And uh, it, it, we have a working beta and it's called the EdTech uh, product, the EdSurge product index. And it's basically consumer reports for education tools and apps. And you can search for them based on a whole bunch of criteria, uh, uh, age, language, cost, platform, um, and, and it includes third-party validation. So if, can, if um, Common Sense Media or uh, you know, an, another organization has, has reviewed and validated the app uh, against some criteria, that's also available in, in the app. So if you get a chance at some point, and totally fine, by the way, if you wanna share this with uh, other members of, of your team, we'd love some feedback. We're gonna release it in uh, uh, January. Um, so this is still, still beta, um, but uh, I'll put the link in here, index. Sorry, I can't talk and type at the same time. EdSurge.com. That's the that's the link. If you don't mind, just pass that along to a, a couple of people in, on your teams. And and there's a big feedback button right at the bottom. Uh, and and just we just would really love to hear whether or not this is meeting the need. And and be blunt, be totally blunt about it. Uh, if it is, if there's things we need to do to make it better, let us know, and and we will. Um, okay, that, that's enough about uh, what we're doing at ISTE. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick a quick update on some fun things uh, that that we have going on. Um, I, as we think about this year, this time that we're in, um, I sort of think I, I'm a simple guy, and so I think about things in, in you know silly drawings. 
And I feel like uh, this little squiggle kind of represents um, what uh, what the world was like before COVID, right? We're kind of going along, doing our thing, uh, some ups, some downs, but kind of just staying, uh, you know, in our in our range there. And then COVID happened, and you know, just like blew up our world, and everything went crazy, and there were all kinds of challenges and issues that we had to be dealing with uh, all the time. Uh, and, uh, and it was very disruptive. It was, it was, it was highly disruptive. Um, but, uh, I, I want to share with you that there's some, <laughs> there's some good news and that is, and I've spent years studying innovation and how innovation works in, in large systems. And one of the things that I can, I can share is that we've seen that, that throughout history, every time there is a major disruption or, uh, you know, major, um, moment of, of chaos, there's always a bloom in innovation that happens after afterwards. And so what we are about to see, I believe, is a moment where uh, the most innovation, the most innovation in education, uh, probably that any of us are going to see in our lifetimes, uh, are going to happen in the next couple of years, this year and, and next year. And they're going to set the, the direction of where we go for, you know, at least two decades uh, in, in the future, and you know, maybe, maybe much longer. And so it's it's a fun time because we're at this transition, right? We're right kind of between these two, the, the like spaghetti chaos mess and something that is different from what we were before. It's an improvement from what we were before, but it's it's building on the conditions that were set by the disruption to uh, to create something really, really amazing and different. And so, uh, so, so it's a great place to be, but there's also a lot of responsibility, right? Because we only get that window once, you know, maybe once in, in a lifetime, maybe, maybe twice, I don't know, but, but that window of, of use the, the conditions that the disruption created to redesign and recreate learning for the future. It's, it's a gift. And, and I know we're, we're, some of us are like, I'm too busy for a gift. <laughs> Take the gift back. I just want to nap for about six months to make up for how crazy this last year was. But it really is a gift that we need to make sure we don't uh, miss the opportunity to, uh, to use. Um, and so, so my comments for the next you know, uh, 15 minutes or so uh, are, really are going to be focused on ways that we can help uh, make sure we are we're leveraging this time. We're making this transition from uh, from moment of chaos to moment of innovation. And and what I want to do is start with um, uh, you know a, 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 an important underlying principle that I, that I think could be helpful, and it's this: equity is more than connectivity. And uh, I, I, it was, it, Sunny actually said it very well right as we were starting, right? And, and connectivity is incredibly important. I'm talking to an organization that helped, has helped make huge progress on connectivity. And so, so this is not me bagging connectivity at all. It's just that I'm worried a bit that there is a, a tendency, and I've seen this in some parts of the country happening already, to say, whew, we got kids connected, we got some devices, roll out the mission accomplished banner, Right. And, and what we need to be very clear about is we don't, while, while, while connectivity is critical and essential, we actually don't get to roll out the, connecti the, the mission accomplished banner just by doing that part of it, right? Equity is more than connectivity. We have to set up our teachers and then thereby our students for success. It's how the, the tools are used how uh, the, the learning um, uh, experience is created using that technology, not just about getting the connectivity. And that's gonna be our, our, our real uh, challenge over these next uh, couple of years. So again, let me show, I'm gonna just share four, um, mm, you know, constructs, maybe mental models uh, that, that we need to be thinking about to help guide us in, in that direction. Um, the first one, we need to be very aware that emergency remote learning is not the same as effective digital learning. And I know that, you know, hopefully that sounds obvious, but I can't tell you, unfortunately, how many times I hear people saying, whew, well, we, we finally tried technology this last year, you know, because we had to, and man, was it a disaster. A good thing we can go back to the way it was before, right? And, and I don't want to minimize the huge amount of work 
that went into making sure there was emergency remote learning. When you're out lost in the woods, in a rainstorm, in a tornado, having a tarp to be under to keep you safe and dry is a huge deal. And, and you all moved mountains to make sure that learning could happen in this last year. And at the same time, without minimizing those efforts, we have to recognize that we don't wanna spend the rest of our lives living in a tent, right? Like it kept us safe during a really rough moment, but at some point we wanna live in something that looks a little bit more like this house on the right, right? We want something with a foundation and electricity and you know, a fireplace maybe, right? Like, and, and so that's a key to just keep in mind as we're talking with our, our teachers, with families, is recognize that emergency remote learning was incredibly important and, and met a very important goal and actually helped us set the conditions for effective digital learning. But effective digital learning looks very different and feels very different than what we experienced this last year. So uh, that's, that's thing one. The second thing, uh, the second kind of shift that I, that I wanna make sure we're thinking about is Basic tool training is not the same as learning foundational principles of effective learning. And, and I know that there, again, in, in this last year, we've had a lot of teachers that we've gotten up to speed on a whole bunch of tools that they hadn't ever used before. And, and that's fantastic, right? Like you actually do need to know how to hold the paintbrush if you're going to be an artist, right? You can't, uh, you can't not do that. Like you have to know how the tools work. Uh, and just knowing how to use the tools, again, will not help you suddenly create a, a beautiful painting. There are some uh, people that can do that. I know some people that, that you just show me where the paint is and wow, somehow in me is this ability to paint this amazing painting. But for most of us, we actually have to learn some strategy and learn how to do blending and learn how to make a beautiful a piece of artwork uh, in addition to how we hold the brush. And we've been doing a lot of this tool training. You know, tool training, it's, it's, the, it's learning how to use Google Classroom. It's learning how to use, uh, you know, all the, all the different tools, the Zooms. It's, it's getting, you know, Microsoft certified. It's all those, all those sorts of things. And again, uh, good to use the tools, but, but that is not going to help us create this, uh, you know, this learning experience here on the right. We have to talk about the fundamental principles of how, uh, how learning works. Uh, and how learning can be accelerated through effective use of, of technology. Um, and, and sometimes I say here, you know, I, I often say, look, I drive, I drive a Toyota, right? Um, but my license doesn't come from Toyota. <laughs> my license comes from a, a, an independent organization in the state that is making sure that I'm capable of driving a car. And, and that's the same way we need to be thinking about, uh, about preparing for, for the future in, in our teacher training. The third one is we need to be very aware that an IT plan is not the same as a vision for digital learning. And an IT plan is, again, it's critical, right? We need to know, we need to have servers that work. We need to have data that is secure. We need uh, privacy in place. We need enough devices that are ready on time and can be handed out. Uh, but, um, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I, I actually was, um, not that long ago, I was talking, talking with Sunny and we were saying, um, one of the, the worst calls I ever get is from a, a district where they say, hey, Richard, we just, we're so lucky. We just got, you know, 20,000 iPads or whatever the device is, you know, Chromebooks. And, and now what should we do with them, right? And I'm like, oh, because, because what we need to be doing is we need to be starting with what is our learning vision? What do we wanna be? What types of experiences do we want to exist? in our virtual world? How do we want to enable and empower our students and their families through technology? And then that drives the creation of our IT plans. And, and you can delegate the IT plan to your CTO and your CIO. You cannot delegate the digital learning vision to your CTO or your CIO. That sits squarely with a superintendent, a head of instruction, a CAO, depending, you know, there's sort of different titles in, in different districts, but, but that is an, a, a, a role that sits squarely with the people who are in charge of defining the, the learning experience for, uh, for the district. Uh, and so that's really a, um, a, a critical uh, a piece to remember. Um, finally, and I want to talk about uh, kids here for a minute because we've been talking about the adult side of the equation. I want to talk about, about young people. As we are preparing them for this world that they live in, uh, it is a, we, we, we have moved to a digital world. Uh, we are not going back. Uh, it was already happening pre-COVID, but it's been accelerated by COVID. 
And we need to be very thoughtful about how we're preparing them to thrive in that world. And there is so much focus and so much talk on online safety. And, uh, and that's great. And I'm glad that we focus on online safety. But at the same time, I'm worried that our over-focus on online safety is happening uh, at the expense of teaching digital citizenship. And they are not the same thing. In fact, um, I, I was actually just uh, uh, sharing. I, I had a chance to uh, speak with uh, with the folks that were uh, attending DigCitCon just a couple of weeks ago, which was an awesome event. I, maybe some of you were there. Um, but one of the things that I shared, as I said, you know, online safety is an incredibly low bar. It's an incredibly low bar to set for students. It's a little bit like saying, um, we're gonna go on a field trip and our goal, if everything goes well, our goal is that there will be no accident on the way there and back. You're like, really? Like that's the goal? Cause you could just not go on the field trip at all. And that would be an even easier way to make sure there's no accident, right? Like like, like the, the goal of a field trip should be higher than that, should be better than that. And, and the goal of what we're teaching our kids should be much greater than just being safe online. It should be, how can we be effective humans, kind humans, humans who know how to use technology to make their world uh, and their families and their communities uh, better, uh, who know how to use their voice through technology to extend far and wide, to encourage people to make better choices, to engage with experts and peers. You get the idea. That's what we got to be talking about. We are in a, a very complex digital world right now. The world that kids are coming into, this is not the digital world that you are, you and I grew up in, right? Uh, this isn't the world. This is a highly complex world that is driven by algorithms and AI. And, uh, and there's, there's huge amounts, huge volumes of information that have to be deciphered for whether they're true or false that have to be uh, used in appropriate ways. And, and just assuming that uh, kids will be able to be good, healthy, happy people in virtual spaces without um, uh, having that taught to them explicitly is not is not going to get us there. And so the question, and, and I want to I want to just share a little bit about this one because I'm I'm excited about some work that I've done recently around this. And and there's a question that I feel like we should be asking quite a bit here, which is. Um, how can we? How can kids uh, become amazing humans in a digital world? That's really the question that we should be asking. And, and then of course, the follow-on question is, what's the role of parents and teachers uh, in making that happen? Um, I just uh, actually just finished writing a, a book about this called Digital for Good, Raising Kids to Thrive in an Online World. And it really is a, a guide for families and, and schools uh, about how to create a healthy digital culture. Because we can't create effective digital learning experiences at school if kids are going home and parents are saying, oh, that technology, that's just going to rot your brain and it's a bunch of mush, right? We need to have families that create healthy digital cultures. But, but I'm also not saying that there shouldn't be limits and, and boundaries. And, and that's important, but it needs to be done in a way that is helpful and supporting uh, using technology for effective uh, online learning. And, and two, I'll share with you two of the consistent problems that we see when, when, I, when I meet with families and I meet with schools when it comes to their digital culture. Uh, one is that the, the focus of the conversation tends to be just very negative, right? Uh, the, the list of don'ts. Uh, don't, don't use technology too much. Don't share your password. Don't share your, your pictures. Don't uh, play games. Don't, don't just lots of don'ts. Uh, and, and, and the other is that the conversation tends to be very narrowly focused on, uh, on online safety. Um, we already talked about the narrowly focused part. So I want to just say a bit more about the being too negative part. And that is, uh, it is impossible to learn how to do something by being told not to do it, right? Because you have to be able to practice these, these skills and you can't practice not doing something. Um, I, I think about this is my son, Benjamin, plays the piano. Uh, and, and I was, as I was writing this book, I was listening to him play the piano downstairs. And I thought, you know, interesting. When we bring kids in and teach them how to play the piano, we don't say, here's all the notes not to play. These are all the wrong notes and don't play them. And here's all the, all the wrong ways to, to, to use the piano and don't do it, right? Or same with a sport, same thing, right? You know, here's all the ways not to catch a football. <laughs> here's all the ways not to make a soccer goal, right? Of course we don't do that. What we do is we teach what we want them to do and then give them lots of opportunities to practice. And that is absolutely um, 
the goal here when we're talking about preparing kids to be healthy digital citizens. I, uh, I was visiting a school and I, and I asked to see their uh, uh, acceptable use policy or their device use policy. This is not a school in California, by the way. I'm sure all of your schools have, have perfectly uh, crafted policies, but this is it. Um, in order to get it on the screen, I had to use six and a half point font. I know you can't read it, that's okay. Uh, but it is 35 don'ts, 35 things not to do with technology. Um, I don't know if I could think of 35 things to not do with technology. Even if you like said, I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks, I think it would be hard for me to come up with 35 things not to do, but that's what it is, 35 things not to do. And not a single invitation, not a single do. And I was talking, I said, why, why in 35 things, and again, we, we could probably limit this to about five things to not do. Why isn't there a single do? As we're signing this agreement and every student has to sign it, why isn't there a list of things that says, and we will use technology to bring in ideas and facts and information to support conversations in our classes. We will use technology to explore new topics that are of interest to us. We will use technology to capture uh, videos or, or, or you know, pictures of our learning work to create portfolios of our work, right? Those are the sorts of things that I would love to see in here. And, and, and if we have, and if any of you have uh, acceptable use policies in your schools that are all don'ts, uh, it's time to go take a look at those. It's time to take a look and say, let's make sure that there's dues. And also let's make sure that they are also written at a language level that is appropriate for kids. For a kindergartner to say, you know, to read this thing, it literally, this says, thou shalt not use technology thus by, you know, applying, it's hard for me to read here, collaboration tools in any ways that are uh, transmitting in manner in, in, inappropriate to the state law of, and I, I blocked out the state. Oh, wait, actually, I don't think I did down there. Um, anyway, we won't, we won't say who it is. It's not California. Uh, that does not work for a kindergartner, right? And so, so having these, having setting the conditions, having the, the guidelines set for how we will use technology in plain English and appropriate for different grade levels. That's what this is all about. That's what we, uh, that's what we need to do. And so, so finally, and, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to um, wrap here because I still want to save a good, you know, 10, 10 or, or 15 minutes or so for, 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 for comments, for questions. I want to, I want to be helpful to you. Um, so, so let me just end with, with this uh, thought. Some of you, um, may uh may spend time watching like hgtv i don't know if you uh you do that i spend way too much time watching old houses getting renovated right steve's looking he's nodding he, he knows right uh, it's awesome i'll never renovate an old house probably in my life but i just pretend that i can and it's a lot of fun but i think about this maybe i'm just justifying all my watching of hgtv but i think about what a good metaphor this is for the place that we are right now right we have uh, a, 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 a great you know, uh, a house that we want to renovate, right? An education system that we want to improve, that we want to make better. But the first thing in all of those shows that they do is they dig out the foundation and they really solidify it. They make sure the foundation is solid. Sometimes they even move the house off and then move it back. It's kind of cool to watch, right? But they want to make sure that they're never making a house on top of a foundation that is weak. Because as great as it looks, as soon as you say, let's move the grand piano in there, right? Flump, it falls through the floor. Or let's hook up the electricity and flump, it burns down because, uh, because the foundation isn't solid and it's not safe. And, and that's what we really need to make sure we're doing. We need to shore up the foundation of the way that we're thinking about using uh, technology so that it is creating a, a, a really uh, amazing future for, for our learners. And as we think about this, this moment of, of transition from spaghetti chaos mess into really amazing, thoughtful innovation, right? The, the, the thing, the factor that's gonna make sure that works is a solid foundation, a foundation that's built on preparing teachers, that's built on preparing kids to be effective digital citizens, that's built on uh, uh, making sure we have a, a vision for digital learning that is more than just our IT rollout plan, right? Those are the factors that will determine uh, that transition. And if we can do it again, and I, and I think we can, uh, we will um, uh, really uh, uh, be setting, designing the future in, in a way that is uh, a very special moment. And so, and so, what I what I'm gonna what I'm gonna end with is, is is a final question, which is, how can I, how can we, how can we all ensure that the pandemic was not wasted on our school? And and, and again, what I mean by that is, how do we make sure 
that as we are going through all this disruption, right? All, all this disruption here, if we go through the disruption only to go back to that squiggly line that we saw before, it will have been worth nothing. The only value we would have gotten is a whole bunch of pain and, and disruption out of it. But on the other hand, if we can leverage this moment uh, of crazy uh, uh, confusion and, and disruption as, as an opportunity to then build a better future, right? We will look back, and I believe this, I really believe this, we will look back in, in three to five years and say, I actually think the pandemic was probably the best thing to ever happen to education because it set the conditions. It was the catalyst that it took to solve so many problems that we just were not able to get traction on uh, before. But that's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to all of us working together to make sure that we absolutely take advantage of this really, uh, really important. So